Elon Musk has landed in China. His private jet was seen arriving in Beijing on Tuesday. There is also uncertainty around expansion plans for the Shanghai plant. Tesla has said it intends to boost output there by 450,000 vehicles per year. Tesla's Model Y is the world's best-selling car, beating out Toyota's RAV4 and its Corolla models. And this marks the first time an all-electric vehicle is the best-selling car across the globe. Between now and 2030, we think artificial intelligence is going to add more value than any of our other uh, technology platforms. In fact, it's going to catalyze them. Uh, we talk about uh, Tesla all the time. It actually is the biggest artificial intelligence play, we believe, right now in our portfolios. It is the largest position in our flagship portfolio, ARKK. In today's video, there's absolutely nothing to see here, unless you have eyes, that is. If you do happen to have eyes, and assuming that they're attached to your brain like in most humans, you might be wondering to yourself, hmm, Elon's in China. Wonder what's going on there? Kathy Wood continues to pound the table reminding everybody the AI revolution is here and Tesla is a leader in real-world AI. And word continues to spread as Tesla Model Y has taken out the number one selling vehicle on planet Earth spot in the first quarter of this year, despite being almost twice the price of the usual top spot and also being an electric vehicle, which apparently we need to advertise to people because they don't yet understand the benefits. And by the way, that's true of many people, yet still already the number one selling vehicle, not electric, but vehicle on earth without any ads with most consumers still thinking that evs don't have sufficient range and most consumers unable to afford to buy a model y that's really worth pondering and if you guys would like more content don't forget to check the links in the pinned comment you can join twitter for subscriber only content there's also a load of exclusive video content and plenty of other stuff over on patreon that you'll find nowhere else uh in the ai space well we think this is a very large market uh and uh we believe right now the hardware side of it is probably in the 30, 40 billion dollar range. Uh, so multiply that by eight, we see the uh, software side going to eight times that. Uh, but over the next, uh, between now and 2030, we think artificial intelligence is going to add more value than any of our other uh, technology platforms. In fact, it's going to catalyze them. Uh, we talk about uh, Tesla all the time. It actually is the biggest artificial intelligence play, we believe, right now in our portfolios. It is the largest position in our flagship portfolio, ARKK. Why is this? Because autonomous taxi platforms, uh, we believe, globally, will Will deliver uh, by 2030 eight to ten trillion dollars in revenue uh, from almost zero right now. Think about that. Eight to ten trillion dollars in revenue is almost half of the size of the U.S. economy. Oh, is that all? It's not like the U.S. economy is large or anything. So I think what she's saying is the robo taxi opportunity is tiny and. Maybe I shouldn't be buying Tesla stock with every spare cent. We think that's a global autonomous taxi uh, platform opportunity. And we think it's going to submit to natural geographic monopolies. Tesla mm. certainly in the United States and perhaps elsewhere. So you're going to be surprised at seeing who's going to. Uh, many people think it's just hardware and software stocks widely advertised. But Tesla, many people think, is an auto stock. We don't. We think it's much more than Right. that but we think it's one of the biggest ai opportunities out there hmm it appears that kathy wood has just strongly suggested that tesla is not in fact just a car company and if that's true many of the so-called experts especially stock analysts on wall street who are under the impression that tesla is just a car company must be wrong and if they're wrong and if kathy wood has seen evidence that tesla isn't just a car company and these geniuses on wall street have somehow missed that evidence does it not then follow that these folks are just Morons? Is that what Kathy Wood is insinuating or am I insinuating that on her behalf? I tell you what, it'd be super awkward if it turns out Kathy Wood's right. This is a leader in terms of artificial intelligence and that AI opportunity will dwarf the automotive business. Even more awkward if this turns out to be correct. And who knows? I mean, geez, what a crazy call. Tesla, not just a car company. What a controversial opinion. If it turns out that's correct, and there are many analysts on Wall Street today recommending investors sell Tesla stock or hold Tesla stock and not recommending they buy it, 
And Kathy Wood's right, and Tesla has a huge winner takes most advantage in certain geographies with autonomy. There's probably a pretty high probability that Tesla stock sometime between now and solving autonomy to the point where it becomes obvious to the people who today think Tesla's just a car company that they're in fact not. At some point between now and that moment of realization, given the multi-trillion dollar opportunity Kathy's talking about here, it seems likely that Tesla stock may surge, not just get a little bit of a bump, but absolutely skyrocket. And if that's the case, it'll be very awkward to be one of the analysts who weren't recommending investors buy Tesla stock today, still about half price from its all-time high, where 12, 24, 36, 48 plus months from now, the stock's going to have increased by multiples. It'd be very awkward to have missed that opportunity, not only to have missed that, but to have been advising investors that there is no opportunity there. Just saying. And you don't think the valuation for Tesla is too high right now? What would prompt you to sell? Uh, well, right now, and we're in print on this, uh, Tesla's at roughly $200. Uh, we believe that in five years, 2027, it will be a $2,000 stock if our research is correct. For what it's worth, just had a glance at my own Tesla stock price targets. 2027, my base case is almost $2,000 per share. So we're in the same ballpark. But obviously, Kathy's dumb and deluded and so am I. So don't listen to anything we say. You shouldn't, by the way, listen to anything we say. You should instead do your own numbers based on your own research and your own assumptions and see what you come up with. But I will say that I'm not going to be surprised if Tesla stock does approximately 10x over the next half decade or so. Probably give it a buffer of about two years on either side. Maybe it takes three years, maybe it takes seven years. Won't be surprised if we see something like a 10x then. Of course, anything could happen. We'll just have to wait and see. And until then, I continue to buy with every spare cent. Uh, importantly, autonomous technology takes it there. If we're not right on autonomous, uh, we still think uh, that Tesla meets our 15% compound annual rate of return hurdle requirement, uh, which means it would be at least a $400 stock just because of the massive shift towards electric vehicles during the next five years. So in simple terms, in either case, even if ARC are wrong about autonomy, they're expecting Tesla stock to approximately double over the next half decade. In the worst case scenario, no autonomy. And if Tesla does solve autonomy, about a 10x. Good luck finding a better risk adjusted opportunity in the stock market. Um, I know they exist. I just good luck finding one. I haven't been able to. Then again, I'm pretty dumb, so. Tesla's Model Y is the world's best-selling car, beating out Toyota's RAV4 and its Corolla models. And this marks the first time an all-electric vehicle is the best-selling car across the globe. Joining us now is Yahoo Finance's Prince of Romanian to break this down for us. Quite a move here for Tesla. Yeah, you know, if you want to sell a lot of product, cutting prices usually is a way to do it, and that's what happened here with, with Tesla. As you said just now, Tesla crossing that uh, top global selling car, according to Jayco Research and, and MotorOne.com, seeing that Tesla Model Y sold 267,000 units in Q1, just above that Toyota Corolla, which sells globally uh, at 256,000 there uh, for the top two. Um, drilling down into those numbers. All right, stop the press on screen now. Does anyone notice anything about this list of the top five best-selling vehicles on earth in the first quarter of this year? The company that produces them starts with T. It's either Tesla or number two, three, four, and five, Toyota. Now let's think about this for a moment. Tesla's released a compact SUV. It costs about twice the price of say a Toyota Corolla or a RAV4 or a Camry, which are literally number two, four, and five on the list. So Tesla's almost double the price vehicles outselling the much more economical vehicles produced by Toyota, and it's still ramping up. And Tesla's already announced the next-gen vehicle platform that'll be about half the price of today's Model 3 or Y. It appears Tesla's already eating Toyota's breakfast, dinner, and lunch, and they're only just getting started. Now, if that's the case, it sounds to me, just based on these numbers, that Toyota may be, what's that word? Uh, oh yeah, f like completely and utterly f***ed. Toyota, by the way, the same morons who today still haven't fully committed to electric vehicles and will be going bankrupt later this decade and they're going to destroy the Japanese economy as a result. Congratulations, Toyota, you f***ing idiots. You did it to yourselves. By the way, quick heads up, I'll be doing an exclusive video yet again, ripping and roasting Toyota. This new documents have leaked. Absolutely f***ing hilarious. Stay tuned for that. It'll either drop on Twitter subscriptions or Patreon, haven't decided yet. Probably why you should join both. Check the links in the pinned comment. 35% um, of all t Model Ys are actually sold in China. Uh, that's up 26% year over year. And 31% of all Model Ys are sold in the US. That's up a whopping 68% year over year. Now, good news here, but like I said before, uh, cutting costs does sort of hurt your margins. It's a concern for Tesla investors, uh, seeing that margin, gross margin numbers dip below 20%. 
Musk doesn't seem, CEO Elon Musk doesn't seem so worried about it. He wants to grow the install base. He wants to sell higher margin software products. So that's his goal there. Uh, but, but also want to note that don't feel too bad about Toyota here because of the top five vehicles, four of them were in were Toyota vehicles and they have a global footprint, like I mentioned, and they're able to sort of weather uh, certain concerns or issues that happen that pop around the globe territory by territory, whereas Tesla is sort of levered to US, China, and Europe as its top three territories. Mm. How do I explain this to Praz? It's good that Toyota holds the number two, three, four, and five selling vehicle spots in Q1 of 2023. It's just one slight problem, Praz. They're not electric vehicles. That's where the market's going. The future top five selling vehicles on earth, maybe a couple of years from now at most, will all be electric. Toyota doesn't make electric vehicles, except the catwalks across the keyboard. I don't know what it's called, the BZFOAD or whatever the f I don't remember. A non-serious attempt at an electric vehicle and a pile of shite. I'm just kidding, everything's gonna be fine. Toyota aren't going bankrupt and really good decision for Toyota to continue to invest into the internal combustion engine vehicle, which is gonna be around for decades to come. So with that in mind then, how long do you think Tesla can hold that spot, especially if perhaps prices start to change and they, and they start to level off, whereas some of these you know, legacy companies and a Toyota sort of slow and steady and consistent with their pricing? <laughs> uh, look, there are no dumb questions, but I'm gonna answer that. This is going to be the number one selling vehicle on earth for the next handful of years until it is pipped by Tesla's next gen vehicle, the $25,000-ish vehicle platform. There might be multiple variations. In fact, maybe five years from now, the entire top five selling vehicles on earth may all be Teslas. You can clip that. To be clear, an electric vehicle, in fact, a Tesla being the number one selling vehicle on earth is not an anomaly. This is not a temporary situation. This is the new normal. Still baffles me that people have not figured this out yet. But we're watching the Titanic sink in real time. Blockbuster imploding. Codex business being torn out from underneath them by disruptive technology that's better in every meaningful way. And yet people still, hmm, how long is the Tesla Model Y gonna stay the number one selling car? What happens when Toyota reduces the prices on their steaming piles of internal combustion engine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that it's with Q1 in the books, it seems like a good trend. The, the trend is positive for Tesla. They're probably going to try to grow on that uh, within, of course, China and in EU and the, and the US. This quarter in Q2, you had the first full quarter with the EV tax credit in effect, so that should help e, uh, US sales. But like I mentioned before, at least Toyota can go can sell across multiple territories across the globe. Tesla hasn't hasn't done that yet. They're not super huge in Asia beyond beyond China. Uh, they're trying to grow in places like Thailand, India, Indonesia. That's that's up next. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the plan for Tesla. I surmise that Toyota will probably sell a lot more vehicles in the, in the back half of the year. They can sell cheaper gas-powered cars, hybrids across the globe. Their mid-size pickup, the Toyota Hilux, is a huge seller for them beyond the, the, the Corolla and, and beyond the Camry. So they have a lot going on. I don't know if Tesla will actually win the, the overall 2022 or sorry, 2023 global race here, but uh, good start for them in Q1. Oh, make no mistake about it. Unless asteroids impact three or four, all four of Tesla's factories this year, the Model Y will be the best-selling vehicle on planet Earth for the full year. You can count on it. Same story in 2024 and 2025. Put a pin in it. Clip this video. Set a reminder. Feel free to roast me if I'm wrong. And when I'm not, feel free to go, God damn, call it again. Then again, it's not much of a call. It's kind of really obvious that Model Y is going to be the best-selling vehicle on the Earth. Tesla's ramping up Model Y production everywhere globally at the moment. The costs are coming down. The prices can come down even further. It's already the best-selling car in the first quarter. Do the math. Well, Tesla appears to have dropped its first ever traditional commercial on its Tesla Asia Twitter page. In this two minute video, a mother gives a driver testimonial about why she loves her Tesla Model 3 and highlights the car's features. So I've got to call bullshit on this. I have seen the video, but one, it's not an ad, it's just a bit of marketing. Tesla's done many of these things in the past and that's the second point. This isn't the first time Tesla's had customer testimonials and created a video. There's a ton of them. Everything from the power wall, participation in the virtual power plant, being a Tesla owner, there's a load of these things that have already existed. Kind of funny how short people's memories are or how ill-informed folks are, just putting that out there. This ain't Tesla's first attempt at an ad. It's not an ad. They've been doing this same stuff for years. I used to feature clips from these in B-roll on my videos on this YouTube channel almost four years ago. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Now on to some thoughts about Tesla potentially advertising in the future because they haven't yet started and I don't think they're in a rush. Elon said they'll give it a try, but I really don't think this is a high priority at Tesla. Now this marks a shift in the company's branding as Elon Musk has tweeted in the past that he quote, hates advertising. I too cannot stand advertising. The caveat there, if it's so entertaining, I see it as content, I enjoy consuming it. It's just in and of itself, it's entertaining, informative, different story. But 99% of advertising is propaganda. 
Very poor attempts at manipulating people. Really rubs me the wrong way. Now, in fairness, I think generally speaking, most advertising, the target market is the lowest common denominator. Think about the bell curve, cut it in half and then shift a little bit further that direction. That's who ads are for. People who don't want to think for themselves or can't think for themselves. Oh, they made a funny thing with a funny animal in it. Oh, there's a brand. I'm going to buy their product because there was an animal in the ad. That's how ads work. And it works on that part of the bell curve. The problem is the kind of ads that I would like to see, just information. Here's the product, what it does, the benefits, etc. Just the facts isn't very effective because the people who care about the facts will just go and learn about the facts independently and make their own decision. Like the kind of people who are already buying electric vehicles today because they've gone and looked at the facts and gone, oh, well, I'd have to be a moron not to buy one of these things. Good thing I'm not a moron. You might notice when I promote AG1 at the end of my videos, I don't have a bunch of scantily clad women about the place in a little packet of AG1 in the background and just randomly mention that AG1's great and then try to manipulate people into thinking, oh, if you drink AG1, you're going to bang tens. Doesn't matter what you do, buddy, you ain't banging any tens. By the way, I know there's a few 3% men watching. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the 97%. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting, but I really have a distaste for advertising as well. I get it. The problem is, the challenge is, how to advertise in such a way that people like me aren't offended and feel like they're having their ears r***ed while well, you're also somehow getting to the portion of the bell curve that traditional advertising is effective on. That's going to be a tough nut to crack. I think in an ideal world, imagine a Venn diagram. You know the two circles that overlap. Here's how advertising in a perfect world, which is not the actual real world, but in a perfect world would work. One of the circles is entertaining. It's valuable. It's just good content for its own sake. The second circle is informative. Actual information, not propaganda, but the facts. The overlap in the middle there, that is the ultimate form of advertising. It's not pure propaganda. There isn't a lack of information. It's informative and entertaining. You'll be surprised if you actually pay attention to typical advertising today. There's almost no information at all. It is pure propaganda with very poor attempts at being entertaining sometimes. Again, the caveat there, if your IQ is like 80, you probably think all advertising is absolutely amazing. Of course, we want to talk about this foray of Tesla now into the traditional advertising space and really the sort of the timing around it. What do you make of it? You know, they, it, you have to um, tip your hat to Tesla for getting this far without investing anything in advertising. So that's uh, pretty remarkable in and of itself. But I think from a timing perspective, despite the, the, the news that you just had uh, just before this about Tesla Model Y leading uh, car sales and, and that success, uh, they face a lot of pressure in the market. Uh, most of the major manufacturers have a, a whole slate of EVs coming into the market over the next 12 months. And I think that they they realize that they have a branding issue um, in the market and they face um, some pretty significant competition coming quickly. Guess who didn't do his homework? This guy. I'm sure he's just been brought on. He's a marketing or advertising expert to talk about Tesla. And they said, oh, Tesla's just said they're going to start advertising. So he's gone and gone, oh, let, me, let me figure out why would they do that? The reason Tesla has just announced they're going to be advertising is literally because an investor asked them to advertise and Elon Musk on the fly impulsively said, oh yeah, okay, we'll try a little advertising. Tesla didn't decide to do this. Elon decided on a whim after an investor requested it, okay, because he believes in listening to investor feedback. Tesla's not concerned about the competition or the millions of planned EVs supposedly being announced by Tesla's so-called competition. That's not why they're considering advertising. It was literally in response to a request from an investor. So then in terms of the elements that really, if you were advising Musk as to how he should approach sort of Tesla advertising, given that he is very outspoken, he's very visible on Twitter as well, and it is hard to separate the man from the brand. Yeah, and I think that's Tesla's main challenge. Um, and it's extremely difficult to solve. How do you separate Tesla's brand from Musk personally? And so Tesla needs to build a brand that can stand on its own. Uh, that has its own value in place in the minds of consumers and where consumers don't automatically think of Elon Musk. And as I said, that's an enormous challenge. Um, but, but Tesla has to have its own brand value in the hearts and minds of consumers um, that is clearly separate from Elon Musk. Don't want to rain on anyone's parade here, but outside of a few echo chambers, including the one you're in right now, the Tesla Twitter sphere and YouTube, the finance media and the media in general who love to talk about Elon because Elon equals clicks, even more than Tesla equals clicks. Most consumers don't give a flying f about Elon Musk being the Tesla CEO. Many don't even know. I've had a lot of conversations with Tesla owners out and about, and I've literally asked them about Elon, and they don't even know anything about the guy. Oh, is that the guy? That's the guy that started Tesla, right? Yeah, I don't know much about him. Does he do rockets as well? That's it. They don't give a f but if you live in an echo chamber or a bubble where everyone around you thinks the same and maybe they're even a big supporter of the current thing, which is Elon bad, 
then you might be under the false erroneous perception that the majority of consumers associate Tesla with Elon. They don't. How many consumers associate Tim Cook with their iPhone? Not many. I think it's important for people to be able to understand there are perspectives other than their own. If they can step outside themselves for a moment, they realize, oh, wait, I live in an echo chamber. For example, everyone on Yahoo Finance, all left-leaning. It's a left-leaning organization. They all vote the same way. They all think the same way. Elon bad. Now, I am making generalizations. There's probably 5% of people within that company who think differently, but are scared to say it out loud. Therefore, they may as well think the same way. It's a gigantic echo chamber. And in that echo chamber, Elon bad. Elon has opinions. Elon controversial. Elon may be a bad CEO. Maybe someone else could run the company instead. I'm not going to name any specific examples, but there are people managing money for others who also live in echo chambers, much the same. And they think everyone thinks the same as they do. <laughs> From an outside perspective, they look like they're f***ing mentally insane. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some consumers out there who associate Elon Musk with Tesla, especially those who hate themselves and hate their life and like to signal how good of a person they are because the current thing is Elon bad. And if you say Elon bad, therefore you're a good person. You might see people tweeting about this. I just bought a Mustang Mark E because Elon Musk is a crazy white supremacist, misogynist Nazi. These people are a very vocal minority of Fruit Loops. The wider marketplace, most people don't give a flying f Just talk to some Tesla owners that aren't your friends and family because you are also in an echo chamber. You see someone parking a Tesla and you're not a socially awkward creep. Say hi to them. Just ask them a question. How's your Tesla? Do you know much about Elon Musk? Ask a bunch of people this question. You'll find most of them don't know sh about Elon. Oh, that's the rocket guy. He owns Tesla. Cool. I don't really know. Whatever. A few of them might even think Elon bad because that's what they heard on the news. But you probe them, they won't even know why they think that. And they're still driving a Tesla. On the subject of Elon Musk. Elon Musk has landed in China. His private jet was seen arriving in Beijing on Tuesday. There was no immediate confirmation the Tesla and Twitter boss was on board. But China's foreign minister later said he had met Musk for a discussion. The billionaire's plans in China aren't clear. But Reuters reported back in March that Musk was planning a visit and seeking a meeting with Premier Li Qiang. He's also expected to visit Tesla's factory in Shanghai. Officials in Beijing welcomed his arrival. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning said China wanted to see foreign businesses deepen their presence there. The trip comes as Tesla faces intensifying competition from Chinese electric vehicle makers like BYD. There is also uncertainty around expansion plans for the Shanghai plant. Tesla has said it intends to boost output there by 450,000 vehicles per year. Where did they hear that? I mean, is this new? Like a new fresh rumor of the same thing we've already been hearing? Now, of course, pure speculation, but why would Elon Musk be in China right now unless there's a good f***ing reason? Whether or not this exact number is right, my suspicion, and it is just a suspicion, is that Tesla's building another factory in China somewhere and or expanding their Shanghai plant, maybe multiple factories, after all, there's an next-gen vehicle to produce, and they're already maxed out at Shanghai about a million vehicles per year. Where the f*** are they going to make their next-gen $25,000 vehicle in China? Exactly. They're going to need a new factory or an expansion to their existing facility. The question is, when does this happen? When is it announced? And what will be the final capacity? Ah, I'm just kidding. Elon's just here to just catch up with his buddies in China. That's why he's visiting. There's no other reason that he'd be there at all. Another question is whether Chinese officials will approve the release of Tesla's advanced driver assistance features. That's part of the full self-driving software it sells in other markets for $15,000 per car. Just on this point, in terms of autonomy and China, there's a lot less visibility. Who's in the lead? Who has the data? Will Tesla be allowed to operate once the autonomy is solved? Morgan Stanley have suggested that Tesla won't be able to operate autonomous vehicles in major portions of China. They won't be able to have sensors on their vehicles. Who knows? I'm no expert on China. All I will say is there's probably a lot of stuff happening in China with autonomy that we're not really seeing here. It's hard to have visibility unless you're on the ground in China. So I can't really speak to that. I can, however, speak to the United States, Europe and other parts of the world where I see Tesla with an unassailable lead. So just quickly recapping today's video, with Tesla stock down about 50% from its all-time highs, crazy lady Kathy Wood, who doesn't know anything about anything, continues to suggest to investors who definitely should not believe her that AI is a huge opportunity. Tesla's the most exciting AI company in the world, and robo-taxis are going to unlock a multi, multi, potentially decker trillion dollar opportunity. And Tesla is in pole position to take huge portions of many geographies around the world. Model Y is already the world's best-selling vehicle in the first quarter of this year. Toyota holds the number two, three, four, and five spot, and guess what? They won't for long. Rest in peace, Toyota. You did it to yourselves. Elon Musk is in China for absolutely no reason, and there isn't an announcement about a new factory or a massive expansion at Shanghai coming soon. And according to the experts, Tesla has decided of their own volition that they really need to start advertising now because the competition 
is coming. And now if you guys will give me a moment, I've decided to massively update my Athletic Greens AG1 promo. Instead of actually telling you facts and sharing testimonials, what people who've actually tried the product have experienced, you know, some information so you can make your own informed decision. I've decided I'm going to have a bunch of scantily clad women, lots of people smiling, children skipping through fields of sunflowers, and just have a nice little bag of AG1 in the background to low key manipulate you into thinking that your family will love you and you're going to get laid by beautiful women if you take AG1. Because that's the kind of advertising that works. Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, snake oil salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. 
Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.